As we described in the introductory program, the Rover 75 uses a new electrical system. This program, for technicians, explains the system and is in five sections. Section 1 covers the various bus systems. Section 2 concentrates on the GM6 controller. Section 3 looks at the main wiring harness. Section 4 describes the light switch module. And finally, Section 5 covers the parking aid and rain sensor. The EWS3 immobilization system was covered in the introductory program. So if you haven't seen that program, we recommend that you view it before continuing. Before starting with Section 1, let's look at where some of the main electrical components are located. There are two fuse boxes. The main one is located here, in the engine compartment, next to the battery box. And a supplementary fuse box is situated behind the glove box in the passenger footwell. To gain access to the supplementary box, you'll first have to release the closure panel beneath the glove box. Most of the relays are situated together in the vehicle's two fuse boxes. However, depending upon the specification of the car, you'll find relays for certain systems located elsewhere. Their exact position is shown in the electrical reference library. Incidentally, the wiring diagrams remain similar to previous Rover models. The main differences being that they include the new bus systems. <laughs> As you know, the Rover 75's electrical system is described as multiplexing. Multiplexing is a technique permitting communication between the vehicle's control systems. It allows information from a single sensor to be shared and exchanged between a number of control units. Information from sensors and switches is converted by the system's ECU into digital signals and relayed serially throughout the multiplexing network. The Rover 75's ECUs are all linked by three bus systems. The name bus is used simply because messages are transported around the car. This section of the video concentrates on two of these systems, namely the CAN bus and the K bus. A little later in this section of the program, We'll also look at the diagnostic line and two smaller standalone bus systems, namely the window bus and the satellite navigation bus. The bus systems vary slightly, but for now it may help you to think of them working in a similar way to a telephone conference network. With this system, several people can all speak and hear each other, yet the dialogue is passed backwards and forwards along only one or two wires. A telephone converts speech into electrical signals that are passed down wires via a telephone exchange to another phone, where the signal is received and converted back into speech. The system is bidirectional, allowing conversations to flow both ways along the same wires. On the Rover 75, information from a single sensor, for example a wheel speed sensor, can be used to feed many control units saving on wiring and the number of sensors. So, multiplexing has the advantages of less complex wiring harnesses, which are cheaper to manufacture and lighter in weight, and improved reliability, as there are fewer wires and hence less connections. Let's now look in more detail at the CAN bus and how it works. CAN stands for Controller Area Network, and the CAN bus, developed by Bosch, is becoming the industry standard for Europe. The CAN system is a high-speed serial data bus, linked by a twisted pair of wires. One is yellow and black, while the other is yellow and brown. The unshielded wires are twisted together to minimize electromagnetic interference, to the radio for example. Both wires carry information, 
and for CAN to operate, both signals must be present. Being the fastest bus system in the Rover 75, it's used where high-speed communication is vital. For example, in the engine management, automatic transmission and traction control systems. As we've mentioned, the CAN consists of a twisted pair of wires. One wire is referred to as CAN low and the other is called CAN high. CAN low switches between two and a half and one and a half volts. Whereas CAN high switches between two and a half and three and a half volts. When both CAN high and CAN low are at two and a half volts, there is no potential difference between the two wires. This is known as the recessive state and is the equivalent to logic one. On the other hand, if CAN high is switched to three and a half volts and CAN low is switched to one and a half volts, there is a potential difference of two volts. This is known as the dominant state and equates to a logic value of zero. Both CAN wires are always switched at exactly the same time and so the potential difference will only ever be either zero or two volts during normal operation. In this way, a digital signal can be transmitted by the ECU containing a stream of zeros and ones. In computer terms, a zero or a one is known as a bit of information and the CAN bus is capable of carrying half a million bits of information every second. By stringing together a minimum of 44 bits to a maximum of 108 bits, a message is formed. It may seem obvious, but a message always has a beginning and an end. At the start, there's an identifier, which informs the system of the content type and priority of the message. The CAN system always responds first to the message with the highest priority. Following this, the message includes a small control field. This contains information regarding the size of data contained in the following data field, which comprises the signal information. Next is the field known as the CRC, which stands for Cyclic Redundancy Check. It checks for message errors, and if an error is detected, the CRC provides instruction to the receiving ECUs to ignore the message. If this occurs, the acknowledgement message is not labelled onto the message by the receiving ECU. The ECU that transmitted the message reads back its own message and will recognise an error has been induced into the message it will then automatically attempt to retransmit the message in its correct format. Calculations predict that only one in ten billion messages contains an error that will penetrate the system. Moreover, experience suggests that the figure is correct, proving just how reliable the CAN system is. Preceding the end of the message is the Acknowledge field. It's used by the recipient to inform the ECU which sent the message that it has been received and understood. Messages are sent repeatedly until they are successfully acknowledged and are dealt with on a priority basis. When messages are transmitted simultaneously by two or more control units, lower priority messages are temporarily ignored while the system deals with those of the highest priority first. The ECU that sent the lower priority message will recognise that its message hasn't been successfully received and will then cease transmission for a set period of time. In addition to communicating with the powertrain control units, the CAN bus is connected to the instrument pack which forms a gateway to the remaining bus systems. Although Testbook can't specifically check the CAN bus, it can monitor input messages to individual ECUs and this will help you with fault diagnosis of the CAN system. By using Testbook as a prompt it will help to guide you through a logical fault finding sequence and with experience 
you'll begin to interpret certain key information. For example, if the tachometer and coolant gauge are working, it indicates that the can link from the ECM to the instrument pack is functioning correctly. Likewise, if the gear selector display of automatic vehicles is functioning, then it indicates that the can link from the gearbox to the instrument pack is intact. If, however, a CAN bus related instrument pack feature isn't functioning correctly, then the problem may well lie in the CAN wiring. In this instance, and under guidance from test book, a multimeter can be used to check the continuity and polarity of the CAN wires. Do remember, though, that although a meter can be used to check the wires, never use anything other than test book to diagnose faults on the bus systems. As an experienced technician, you'll appreciate that ECUs are very reliable and that most faults are caused by wiring defects or poor connections. And it's here that CAN bus has a major advantage, as there are fewer connections than on previous models. In the unlikely event of the CAN wires becoming damaged, it is possible to repair them. However, the repair information must be followed exactly, as this operation, although not difficult, does require a great deal of care. Incorrect repairs may lead to a CAN bus malfunction. The K bus system is slightly slower than the CAN bus. It uses a single white wire with a red and yellow tracer. It's capable of carrying 9,600 bits of information every second. And because it's slower than the CAN bus, it's used for less critical systems. Therefore, the K bus is used to communicate with all the body electronic systems and with the instrument pack. Incidentally, it's called K bus because the German word for body is carrosserie. The K bus switches between 0 and 12 volts and it has a low electrical impedance making it resistant to electromagnetic interference. It's primarily an event driven system in that messages are only sent after a request has been made for example switching on the lights or operating the sunroof. Just like the CAN bus each ECU converts the sensor or switch information into digital signals for transmission upon the K-Bus. Similarly to the CAN bus, the receiving ECU converts the digital signals back into a usable format. A K-Bus message is known as a telegram and is made up of several parts, each containing a number of data bytes. All ECUs have an address to identify the sender which forms the first part of the message or telegram. Like CAN bus, with K bus there's a priority system where each ECU has a priority ranking controlling access to the bus. For example, the GM6 body controller has the highest priority. Its messages override any other which happen to be transmitted at the same time. Each ECU connected to the K bus continually monitors the activity on the system. When it wants to transmit, it waits until there is no activity and it then attempts to send its telegram. The ECU then listens for its message returning. If it doesn't receive its own message, it knows that a user with higher priority transmitted at the same time. The ECU then waits for the system to become quiet and then sends its message again. Once it receives its own message back, it knows that the transmission has been successful. Finally, remember that GM6 telegrams have the highest priority on the K bus and that both the K bus and the CAN bus are connected to the instrument pack. The instrument pack is a vital part of the Rover 75's network and is similar to a telephone exchange inasmuch as all the messages are communicated through it between the various bus systems. Due to the differences between the bus systems 
The instrument pack contains a microprocessor to convert and process all signals so that they're compatible with the other bus systems. Hence the instrument pack is described as a gateway to all bus systems. A third bus system is known as the diagnostic line. It's connected directly to the instrument pack, ECM, ABS ECU, traction control ECU where fitted, JATCO gearbox where fitted, and to the supplementary restraint system DCU. The diagnostic line's function is to enable test book to communicate with each of these systems. In addition, Via the link to the instrument pack, Testbook can access ECUs on the K-Bus system. Using a single pink and white wire, the diagnostic line is capable of carrying 10,400 bits of information per second. It operates in a very similar fashion to the K-Bus and is accessed by Testbook via the red diagnostic connector being plugged into the socket in the driver's footwell. Note, you'll need to use the specific Rover 75 testbook disk and ensure that testbook is updated to use the latest Rover diagnostic system. A new feature of testbook for the Rover 75 is the central coding key. This contains information regarding the configuration of the vehicle and its systems programmed during manufacture. The central coding key information is stored in three separate places. The instrument pack, the ECM, and the immobilization ECU. When test book is connected, its first action is to access the central coding key information. This may take a few minutes. Once completed, Testbook then displays only the icons relating to the various systems on board that particular Rover 75. Previously, for example on a Rover 800, Testbook displays all the available systems irrespective of whether they are fitted. If desired, you can now read all the fault codes stored in every ECU on the car with a single operation. But beware! If you select this option, it will take several minutes to complete. The real-time display has also changed. It's now more comprehensive and assists while fault-finding by providing you with more information. In addition to the diagnostic line, there are two further bus systems to consider. They are the separate window lift and satellite navigation buses. The window bus, or wind bus for short, is a discrete connection using a single wire between the driver's door module and the GM6 controller, which controls all the window lift operations. The GM6 receives signals directly from the switches on the remaining doors. The satellite navigation system is covered in a separate video. However, note that the low-line system has a separate bus system to send graphics information to the display in the instrument pack. All other inputs to the navigation computer on both the high-line and low-line navigation systems are made via the K-bus or are hardwired. <laughs> The previous program introduced you to the GM6 controller. It's a new control unit incorporated in the K-Bus and is located behind the glove box. The GM6 is equivalent to the central control unit of the 800 series. Depending upon the model, two versions are fitted. The low-line version is cream in colour and controls the following systems. Front window lift, Alarm, low-line heater and air conditioning, fresh air and recirculation air flow, interior lighting, wipers, heated rear windscreen, and central door locking. 
The alternative Highline GM6 controller, which is black, controls the same systems as the low-line unit, but is also responsible for the rear window lift system. Some features of Rover 75 systems are configurable using Testbook. There isn't time to show you how to configure all the options, but let's take a quick look at some of the features. Transit mode is perhaps the most important. All Rover 75s will arrive at the dealership with transit mode enabled and test book will be required in order that you can disable it. Transit mode limits the operation of certain systems to reduce battery drain. For instance, the entire anti-theft alarm is disabled, along with the sunroof and rear electric windows if fitted. Additionally, when in transit mode, access to the rear seats and boot area is denied. This helps to prevent damage during transportation. It's arguably the alarm and locking system that provides the most options regarding configurability for market and customer preferences. You may already have had some experience of using Testbook to select or deselect some of the options. Depending upon the selected market, the following features are programmable. Single point entry, remote locking, B-bus on and off, one-shot open, anti-trap, and ultrasonic alarm. A one-shot up facility is provided on the driver's window for vehicles fitted with the anti-trap facility and can be selected using test book. <laughs> The main vehicle wiring harness runs the length of the car from the headlamps to the rear lamps and connects at each door to the individual door harnesses. The sunroof harness, which is also separate, is integral with the roof lining. The harnesses employ many new types of connectors and these require special tools to remove and replace them. The harness can be repaired in sections, which are available from the parts department. These sections are spliced into the existing harness whilst carefully following the repair information. To perform professional and successful repairs, the special toolkit is essential. Incidentally, the CAN bus twisted wires, the single wire K bus, and the single wire diagnostic line are integral to the main wiring harness, as is the SRS harness. We explained the new light switch module, or LSM, in the introductory program. It's located on the dashboard and consists of an ECU and a switch pack. Together, they control the headlamp levelling, instrument panel illumination and all the exterior lighting with the exception of the reverse lights which are wired directly either to the manual gearbox switch or the selector lever on automatic transmission models. The LSM carries out bulb monitoring and informs the driver if a fault occurs. If the LSM fails an internal emergency system is activated. It switches on the dipped beam and the tail lights irrespective of the position of the master light switch. Also in emergency operation, the brake lamps are operational. During normal operation, the LSM disables the emergency operation system. However, if the battery voltage falls to 6 volts or below, the emergency operation facility is initiated. The innovative tail lamp backup facility is yet another function of the LSM. If a tail lamp bulb fails, the corresponding brake light is lit at a reduced current, so that its brightness is equal to that of the remaining tail lamp. The LSM additionally provides the courtesy